What is this, man? It's just a tiny dirt. Tiny piece of crap. It does not deserve three episodes. So let's just get to work. We really need to finish the thing. Everything marked with an X, I've already done. Not planning to revisit them anytime soon. Hopefully. But the next obvious thing would be auxiliary hydraulics. But actually, I'm gonna do the lock nuts. There should be an A here. It's very confusing. So I wanna do the wheel locking nuts. Just gonna figure that situation out. Right now, I need to figure out which of these bolts don't bolt. <laughs> Where's the nuts, man? Stupid nuts. Oh, there you go. You guys wanna guess how much this cost? So this setup, a nut and a bolt. I paid a bit over 10 bucks for it. That's why I only decided to get eight and not the entire set. Mostly on the machine though, I think I don't have that many bolt issues. It's mostly just nut issues. Yeah, not issues. But I do remember that at least some of them were bad, like, for example, this. Bunch of threads missing there. This is usually not a good sign. Definitely gonna go over all of them. Hopefully, there's no more than eight that I need to change out. Because eight's all I got. As for them, not. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we're looking about seven. Now, I'm not saying these are bad. They might be good. There's just different size, and I would like them to be the same size. Out of this pile, only one can be bad. If more of them are bad, I, I'm just gonna take these. I think that I think these are fine. There's just different size, and that's annoying. But what are you gonna do if? If these things cost like 10 bucks per one, what are you gonna do? Looks like only one on this wheel not really sure how they come out i think you just need to hammer them out Maybe I can pull it in with the nut. I think I got it in there now. Should be solid. Hmm. Interesting. Now, all in all, they look good. Yeah, I didn't find any more damaged 
bolts. But on this rim, something is going on. We got the obvious bolt here, there, there, there. But this, 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 and that it just looks like a threaded rod. Or maybe it's an aftermarket bolt. And the tips on the original OEM parts look like that, but it's different. I wonder if the thread is the same. Kind of goes in there, but it goes for a little bit and stops. Yeah, they all act the same way. It just goes a bit, about halfway, and then doesn't want to go anymore. Yeah, this goes fine, the like original. Interesting. Yeah, the thread is different. See, that matches up nicely. That is pretty interesting. Like, what is this? Is this threaded rod, really? I don't think so, but... Same deal, it goes a little bit and then stops, even with the old nut. I have a feeling the thread is very close, but not quite. Some type of a hybrid. You know what, let's take one out. I'm kind of curious what it looks like. It's possible that this thing is from another machine. A brother with another mother. Yeah, definitely look a bit different. It's a bit longer. Just a tiny bit. Look like some reused bolts. Should probably get like a new hob, maybe. You're right. I'm not getting a new hub. Are you high? If they're not gonna stay here, I'm just gonna weld them here. Unseparable, these two. They're like made that for life. Okay, well, the locking nut situation seemed to have resolved itself. So let's just kind of pick up the list from here. Let's try to figure out the auxiliary hydraulic situation. Okay, here's the situation about the hydraulics on this thing. The direction lock override button, that works. That's what uh, unlocks the hydraulics. I mean the main hydraulics, you know, lift and tilt. That thing there should activate the auxiliary hydraulics. Currently, I'm not sure why you need to like press it twice. I guess the second time it locks it or 
probably should look into it. I'm not really sure about that, but I do hear a click somewhere. So if I press it, there is a click somewhere. Second time, it doesn't do anything. And if I disable it, there is another click. So we got that button there. I'm not really 100% sure what that does. Went through that stupid service manual like two times. Man, there is no information in there about the buttons. So there is zero information what that does or what that does. Not even that. It doesn't even explain what that does. I guess you need an operator's manual to kind of understand what's what. It's kind of lame. You pay 60 bucks for a service manual and it's kind of useless. Only good if you need to fix something. But to understand something, buy another manual. But off the top of my head, I'm guessing that is like some uh, foot pedal lock override valve dinghy. Because if I engage that button while the engine is running, the foot pedals, they do not work anymore. So the basically the hydraulics are locked. You cannot do anything even if you press that override button like a million times. Hydraulics are just solid lock. Also, I have no idea what that button does. So much mystery right now. I'm gonna try to figure it out though. But about the hydraulics, guys, you know, maybe the thing works. I've never tested the thing before. I've always kind of assumed that uh, they don't work, but I've never hooked anything up to these lines. So only one line though. The other is here for some reason. So maybe it's the same as it was with the Yanmar. Because on the Yanmar, I had no idea if the auxiliary worked as well. But I just took a random hydraulic cylinder, hooked it up to the system, everything worked. Maybe it's the same deal here. So before we dive into the rabbit hole of troubleshooting, let's just check the hydraulics. Maybe I don't need to do anything. Hmm. I guess that thing goes a bit deeper in there. And there was a steel line here at some point, but uh, I suppose that got smashed off. And they just kind of capped the thing off. really stuck. Man, I would love to put like a steel replacement line there so it would be original. But what would be the point of this thing then? Why did I get all these hydraulic hoses? So I should try to um, Find the beast from this box. Maybe, maybe, maybe let's check the other box. Huh. Honestly, I thought it's gonna take a bit longer. Leave it like 
Not perfect, but you know, maybe I can push the thing in here. Should be plenty of room in here. Too bad I can't access it from this side, it's just walled off. And I don't have a lot of space down here as well. Oh, never mind. There actually isn't much space here. I guess I can just take the thing to a hydraulic shop. You know, cut it off, make it shorter. I only need about half a meter off anyway. Shouldn't be as expensive as a new hose, right? But not right now, guys. You can't afford it anyway. I kind of have like 40 something bucks to my name right now. $45 about. So situation is a bit tight right now. Yeah, I can't even afford that. But if everything nicely bans out, I will explain the situation to you guys. I'm not gaining anything, but it's a very positive thing overall. Dude, I need to buy bigger wrenches. Oh, never mind, I can't. I'm kind of broke right now. Now, I'm not really sure about this quick attachment. It's probably rusted shot by now. I did already pre-buy a couple of quickies. I would like to use these instead. They work out pretty well. I'm not really sure what what's the deal with this thing. This won't even... The thing is probably some special eagle size anyway. So I want to go with this setup. Gonna try to keep all my hydraulics the same throughout the machines. But uh, this doesn't fit on the hoses directly. Mm, I think. Yeah, it's a bit too big. Because I need to cut this one shorter anyway. So they could add the right fitting to this hose, which would match this thread. And for that line, I could get like a fitting, which on one end is this size and the other end is this size. But I need to get this thing out of here because I can't test the hydraulics. Uh, this will not let any oil flow through it. Needs to get lost. I do need this thing though, because I don't know what size this is. The guys at the hydro shop will do. Give me the right fitting for the thing. Should turn out like that. I think. Okay, so I'm gonna look into it, which will be the cheaper option. Either get new fittings, uh, so I could use these two, or maybe get a female quick attachment, which is this size. And then I will only need one more this fitting to complete the setup. But I'm gonna look into it, I'm not sure right now. Basically, just gonna go with the cheaper option. I think this would also work, but 
um, they're a bit smaller size wise. Like this is about the same size, but uh, this is considerably smaller, almost like two times smaller. So that will affect the flow rate. How much gallons per minute of oil I will get. More restriction also to the oil flow means that the pump will have to work harder. The temperature will also increase. This might actually be a better option. But I should be able to test the setup out now. If I get a bunch of oil from these hoses, then um, the axillary works. If we don't get anything, then we need to continue troubleshooting. What might be the problem? So I do hope we get some fluid from here. By the way, I also figured out what all these buttons do. Well, almost. Like 99%. So I found this operational manual for the 853. This is by the way free. You can just Google it, download it and do whatever you want. It's a different model, but uh... damn, they look pretty similar, don't they? I figured the controls, they just have to be the same. Why can't they make this into a one document? It's very easy. They just want to squeeze more money out of you. Maybe I should order the tape as well to watch some safety instructions. Wonder how much that will cost. Wow, check it out. So many freaking attachments. Look at the standard bucket, backhoe, the street washer thing. What is that, lock splitter? No, no, no grater. What the hell? Echo grater? Was that like running on biodiesel or something? Right, bit dirty roller. Planer. Wow, there is a lot of attachments. I did not even know about most of them. Scary fire? What? Dude, what is that even? Rips asphalt? Wow, cool. Auger, that's for holes. I knew that. Drencher, that's for drenches. Industrial bucket grappler. Dude, I want one of those. I'm actually, if I get the hydraulics to work, I want to build one. Like a bucket grappler. Andrew has one and I want one. Forks are great. Hydraulic hammer, that is even greater. Stump grinder, wow. Wheel saw. You're telling me we can have a bobcat with a finger remover? I would say take my money, please, if I had any. Handler, snow blower. Snow blower, oh, sorry. Tree planter. Want one? Angle blade. Use a heavy duty version for dosing and backfilling. Dude, I made that. I have a do in one angle blade. Tracks, guys. You guys have constantly said that I need tracks over my wheels. There we go. We have uh, attachments for that. Inside some manual. But I'm not gonna do it. I already explained this, but because the wheels I got for the Bobcat, they have this massive tread. I don't think they're the right wheels for this machine. I don't have any clearance in this area. If I put some type of track over the wheels, that track will just grind against the frame constantly. It will destroy all the hydraulic hoses and uh, mess up the frame. So unless I bought new wheels for the thing which are meant for my machine, I cannot put tracks over my wheels. Demolition claw. That would be amazing. But anyway. We got all the hydraulic controls nicely labeled out here. So let's do go over them really quickly. Just kind of explain what each and every button does. Maybe it will help some people. So basically here's the situation. You power on the machine and then you go over to the auxiliary button. If you press it once, the top light will come on. Then you have activated the front auxiliary hydraulics. If you press it the second time, the second light will come on. That uh, will activate the rear auxiliary hydraulics. Now on your um, right lever, this button should control the front hydraulics. So fluid comes from there. And on the left lever, the middle button is for the rear hydraulics. Now, I don't think my machine has rear hydraulics. I, mean, I did look back there. I did not find even any lines for the thing, but the button is still there. Now this button on the left side, apparently that's uh, your signal light. You can turn left or right. I do not need that crap. Don't even care if it works. The, the right button though, it's labeled as 
optional water kit. I wasn't really sure what that even means. But apparently it has something to do with the sweeper thing. The back button on the left lever is horn. And the back button on the right lever is uh, something called the tent mode. And that should provide constant flow to the front. In Popcats, they can have some uh, interesting attachments as we just previously saw. For example, for a backhoe, you need constant flow of a hydraulic fluid. The backhoe attachment itself will have a separate hydraulic control valve, which will take that flow up and divert it wherever you're doing the digging part. So you press it once to activate it and press it again to deactivate it. So that's all the switches on the levers. But let's kind of go over this panel now. Sadly, I did not find much information about this panel. Not a word in my service manual and in the 853's operator's manual, absolutely no word. So I did a bit of digging, didn't really find much useful information, sadly. That button there is my additional lights that uh, I installed on the machine. The middle button there, I have no idea. Did not find any information there. And that button there, I'm... Well, my previous explanation was pretty close. It's supposed to lock the hydraulics out. I think that's a safety feature, but I don't have concrete evidence on that. It's kind of very likely option that. And that thing there is obvious. It's just your standard microwave to cook lunch. What a bummer. I was hoping this would be an easy fix. There are a couple of things that I can try. Like for example, to check the wiring. If the wiring is connected nicely up with the levers. The other problem might be in the main control valve. There are two solenoids for auxiliary hydraulics on that valve. It's very unlikely that they're both bad, but still possible. But for that, I need to get the gap up. Gonna throw some shoes on the thing and park the thing there. I know guys, this is not a traditional way, but um, do I look like a traditional person? Obviously not. I'm some nut job who likes to do things differently. We have some problems with the other wheel. The chain never came off, but uh, it's not very well installed. It's kind of off to one side. I wonder guys, what would a professional tire dude say about right now? I know exactly what. The guy would say nothing. He would just kind of stare for a bit and um, just 
start crying. But don't worry, guy. I will email you some tissue paper. Making me walk over there, really. <laughs> what the hell was that? We gotta look at that again. Dude, something is just about to break off. I don't know. So much problems, man. I don't even care anymore. I'm gonna deal with the pin situation later. This is just a nightmare right now. What? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, weird that I've never even noticed this problem before. Luckily though, you guys nicely pointed it out for me. It's good that you guys pointed this out for me. I would have done nothing because I can't see anything. Dude, I don't even know where to begin. There is just so much wrong here. Let's just start off with the obvious. I mean, there is just so many unblocked connections. The wiring on this thing is just so messed up. We got an unblocked connection there, which goes hell if I know. Same deal down there. Another one there. Another one there. Another one there. Oh look, a couple of cut wires even. Very good. Oh, and check out the parking brake solenoid. It doesn't exist even. There should be a there should be a solenoid here which activates the parking brake. Apparently that thing has been redesigned. East European style. So that doesn't work. The parking brake switch though, seems to be in good working condition. But obviously the system does not function without the solenoid. So I'm not even sure if this thing is supposed to be here. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on here. I think somebody's just going to bypass the system somehow. A bunch of hackers. But about the auxiliaries. So we got the main control body there. We got the two auxiliary solenoids here on the top. 
down there somewhere is the auxiliary pool spring. It's on both sides, so that thing there and uh, on this side as well. The auxiliary lines themselves, A and B. This plug here is supposed to be the auxiliary relief valve, but that's apparently optional. So on my machine, that thing is just kind of blocked off. I don't think I need to open that. Basically, there are like two things that I can dry. I can check if the wiring is okay from the buttons at the levers, and then I can check the solenoids. If the solenoids are non-functional, then the system will not work. So we got two buttons on that lever, so one and two connectors. Kind of checks out. The other lever has more functions. So we got more gables and one of them is disconnected. Let's see this one first. I'm not sure which this one is. I'm guessing that the tent function, which has just one button. Okay, that button works, which is great. Okay, there, that works. And the second function also works. So this lever works fine. Quickly gonna go over this lever as well. Wonder what the unblocked thingy is. No idea, man. I have no connection there. Probably why it's unblocked. So I'm guessing this one is the horn. Electrical connections filled with oil. Okay, that's the horn. So this should be the rear hydraulics. Oh man, it's so messed up, it's so dirty inside. I guess these blocks are not super tight and waterproof. I always thought they were waterproof. Okay, yeah. I'm kinda curious which block is this. If we figure out which one this is, then we can clarify that. Yep, so the unconnected plug is the optional water kit. All right, so the buttons on the levers work, they function. Next thing that we can try to test is if the solenoids are getting any power. I don't think I need to start the engine for that. I should be able to just engage the hydraulic valve while having the ignition on. Oh, I need to. Press that button as well. Okay, so the system is active now. The traction lock thing, it's giving me a fault code. Looks like it's one blink per session. Should be somewhere here. There we go. Mm. Number of flashes one. Traction lock hold coil circuit is open. Obviously manually done by someone to just kind of remove the parking brake future. But um, don't really care about that right now. It's not really an issue. If you guys wanna read this a bit, here's some 
closer image for you. Sorry. Anyway, we should get somewhere around nine volts. Or what? Why are they all filled with oil? How did it get in there? It should be a sealed plug. So one solenoid should operate the hydraulics one way, the other the other way. And the solenoids should work at around 10 volts or or maybe it was between 6 and 9 volts. So guys, you don't want to put 12 volts on those solenoids. You will break them. Don't do that. Bunch of zeros, bro. Maybe I need to start the engine. Dude, I'm not getting any power at all to the solenoids or the levers. But at some unconnected random piece of crap pointless plug, we have power. Going great. Dude, I'm about to give up. Where's my... Where, where is my Abrams tank, man? Joe, you were supposed to send one to me. I need some target practice, please. Okay, so I checked all the fuses on the machine. There's a total of... Nine, I believe. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and uh, another two are in the gap. Fuses are okay, all of them. Actually, I changed all the fuses out. I put brand new fuses in the thing. And this one, this one was the auxiliary panel fuse. It, it checks out. I think I know how the system is supposed to work. Sort of. So you press those two down first. That uh, signal is diverted into a uh, power module or some type of a computer, which is that thing over there. I'm kind of thinking maybe this unit is bad. This thing, yeah, this doesn't work anymore. We got 11 volts there, nothing there, so we only have one live here. Question is though, do we have any output? Anything at all? Nope. I have a feeling the fault is there one more thing i can do check the wiring between the solenoid and the block there the black one should always be ground yep there we go so that connects to that solenoid So this is definitely the output side. And from here, we should get like, like nine volts. Well, not from this plug, but rather from uh, that plug there. Which one was it? Second from left. Oh, I need to press the button as well at the same time. Yeah, we're not getting any output. Although the auxiliary hydrax has been activated. No output. We have input, but no output. So as I understand it, here's how the system is supposed to work. 
Firstly, you activate the auxiliary button inside the cap. Then you try to use the hydraulics with the button. That should send a signal into the computer thingy over there. We should transfer about nine volts into the solenoid. But I have no power here whatsoever. I have input power there, but no output power. So I don't really know how to proceed other than changing that block out. It's obviously not worth touching the solenoids right now because I don't have any power at the solenoids. So I can't test if they work or not. Not really sure what to do. It's kind of beyond my expertise. If I had any, I mean, I'm not gonna waste any more time on this right now. If I figure something out, I'm gonna let you guys know later. Right now, let's just kind of try to fix stuff that I can actually fix. Like for example, we got a giant hole in the exhaust pipe there. That was most likely my fault. Next, come here, Alex. I got a pretty compact seat bow in it, Christ. I got like six miles of extension here. Can hardly see the thing. Don't fall down there. I won't be able to recover you. Boy, welding.
By the way, guys, I found uh, the thing. The, the thing. Apparently, it's called Auxiliary Control Mojo. Looks, um, looks about right. Looks about the same, yeah. I wonder how expensive it is. Oh look, almost $600. Very nice. So it's $600 at Bobcat. That means through my guy, we're probably looking at about six grand. Even better. Is there any information here? Oh. Auxiliary control module for loaders, blah, blah, blah. Is for loaders that do not have the factory installed front accelerator hydraulics option. The module allows the operator to control the various electrically controlled functions from the control handle. Due to engineering standards, some parts are updated or changed and are assigned a new part number. Blip, 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 blip. Bunch of gibberish in the end. Now, I can't really confirm if this is the problem. It's very likely, but man, for $600, I don't know. If I was 100% sure, I would probably do it. But I'm not really sure how to confirm that. So maybe you guys have some ideas. You guys always get me out of a pickle. Who's out on my side, Got it. By the way, guys, I had to rebuild it because it was just ever so slightly off its mounting points. So I had to rebuild about half of it. Third time's the charm. The first time I was completely off. Only was able to get one bolt in. The alignment was just a couple of miles off. Second time I was able to get all the bolts in, but as I reached the final, final tensioning stage, I noticed that uh, the bolt broke. So I guess it wasn't aligned perfectly. Hopefully this time it will not leak. When you spend so much time on one item, trying to make it work, at some point you kind of start thinking, was all this worth it? Maybe you should have just bought a new part. I'm still kind of thinking it was. Couldn't afford a new piece anyway, so I have no option. Hopefully the brokenness thing will end soon.
Rõhtale meil nii palju minna. Võimatu keerata näis. Damn. Well, that thing is just gone. I think it's pretty good. Seems pretty acceptable at this point. By the way, while we're already chilling in this area, I totally forgot to mention one thing. It's like a service related thing. Didn't know, but apparently this is a fan gearbox and it needs to have gear oil in that port. So before I go anywhere, I'm gonna quickly check that. Man, what the hell? Stupid special size again. Yeah, it's like H. Nine. H10 doesn't fit, H8 too small. Man, I've never even heard of a H9. Never seen one even. I hate this thing. For game nine, whatever that thing is. Nope. I'm gonna go sleep for a bit. Let the ding do its ding. That was so boring. I was hoping something's gonna break. That was so lame. Kurad na! Seda ka kätte enam ei saa, mine pekki! Ma ei vaes, kus selle mõni nere mõniga kõik tõõrisud kaavad kuhugi alla ära. There's the oil, man! The thing is completely dry, wow. This is such BS. Honestly, I'm not even surprised. And that thing is completely bone dry. I don't see any oil at all. That's a peck, it's not a tuhina. It's not a mitte, it's not a About 700 grams. Well, at least it now has oil, so that's great. So we fixed something and the gearbox. Turbine fan gearbox. Checks out. Frame cracks, guys. I'm not really sure about this. Maybe it was just an optical illusion, but I think there are a couple of cracks in the frame. However, before I dive into that mess, there are at least a couple of odd jobs that I need to finish under the hood. One of them is not listed here. I think that was the fan. Fan. Fan bully assembly. It's kind of doing that. Don't think it works correctly. And the second thing was the rear lights. I have to finish the wiring for the rear lights. I ordered this bunch. 
couple of really, really small LEDs. I figured like, maybe I can fit them in there. At least make the red light shine slightly. It's not gonna work as a brake light or a turning signal or anything like that. But uh, since when do I need those things? Anyway, as long as the thing shines, then I'm happy with it. Plus this thing is really cheap. It's like, I mean, $3 for one. Oh, that's why it's cheap. Probably will burn for like five minutes and then break. Looky, looky guys, we got another unconnected plug there. But I don't even see the other end of that plug. It's kind of lonely, lonely plug here. <sighs> you know, at this point I'm kind of wondering, maybe this is normal. I'm not really sure. It's kind of weird, but maybe it's normal. So many unconnected stuff. You never know, maybe originally this thing was designed to be a spaceship. And they just kind of cut all the features away, but the wiring is still there. Man, I gotta hone that thing through the engine compartment somehow. You know, all the wiring it goes through the, under the bump. Bidding I can go through that area, it would be a lot easier. I could get rid of all this punch. I only need the one wire. Yeah, you can chill there, man. I don't need you anymore. I actually can't believe it how correctly I made the length. It's pretty interesting. Wow. Check it out, guys. This light has mounting brackets that kind of match up with this light. I don't get it. Nobody's that lucky. I'm for sure I'm gonna bore concrete in here to see all the deal. Bro, that makes no sense. I don't know why it has three wires though. That LED is labeled as uh, emergency light. So probably it has something to do with that. But I should get it to work on just uh, the red and black. I should be able to ignore the yellow, whatever that is. Right, 
なんかマジじゃないですか。Man, what is this copper made out of? Pudding? She keeps breaking apart like nothing. Actually, need to. Map out that connector, maybe. Or maybe I can just do this. Yeah, I can probably do that. Look at that. I'm so good at making things the right length. No waste generated. Give me a Nobel Prize, please. Wonder how it looks. What I meant to say was that I wonder if the thing will even turn on. Dude, check that crap out. That's even better. Now the guys who work behind me, I can give them epilepsy seizures. That's like a bonus. I wonder why the the flashy flashy thing is different. One do, one do, one do, one do. But there's like one do three, one do three. One. Maybe it has something to do with the yellow wire. But uh, anyway. That uh, belt tensioner assimilating there, I think it's just bad. Because it's kind of all over the place. Doesn't look super healthy. I suppose that's necessary because it drives the fan, which cools the oil and coolant. Those are probably important. So... I ordered a new bully assembly dinghy. Get this, guys. My local dealer. The guy wanted $376 for this. For this thing, I'm not even kidding you. $376. Piece of plastic, some, um, I guess that's aluminium and couple of bolts. Maybe there's a bearing there as well. 370 something odd dollars. Oh, and the spring. To WDF, are they knowingly just trying to jerk you off? That makes no sense. I paid like 60 bucks for the thing, ordered it from eBay. What? I don't get it. DM. I guess we know why there is no oil in the gearbox there. The thing is obviously leaking out. But I'm not gonna dive in there right now. Just gonna check the oil again in about a month. Take it from there. Some blade somewhere doesn't seem too bad. Maybe. It should be an Allen head there. Size though, I'm pretty sure it's some H six point by six point by.
And the bearing is still intact, but... Doesn't make very good noises. Also, check out the spring. The thing has collapsed. Dude, that cannot be correct. Yeah, I have a feeling this is the wrong belt for the thing. This should be the right belt. But it's 45 millimeters longer. Okay. What's the point of this belt card? If I can just get the belt out like that. What's preventing it from uh, jumping off during running the machine? Man, that makes no sense. This doesn't do anything. It's kind of pointless. Maybe I can use the old one. I don't know guys, it looks dirty, but other than the bearing making noises, it doesn't look a lot different. Apart from the... Um, apart from the belt limiter being so far off on the new one. problem guys you can't get the new bolt on there doesn't go in at all the old bolt works nicely although the dread is same it's not gonna go on there I already tried to modify the bolt of it that didn't work can't use this bolt as well because uh, the bushing is thicker than on that one. Okay, so I took the old aluminum part, put a new flywheel on it with the new spring. Kind of a combo of the duo. Hopefully it will work. Did the new belt. That was too long, it wouldn't fit. I don't know what's up with dealers these days. They just send you the wrong stuff all the time. I guess the old belt doesn't look too bad. At least didn't see any cracks or anything like that. So that belt is jumping around a lot. It's either a bad belt or the gearbox bearing is bad. And yeah, considering that clunk in there, most likely that's the case. I'm gonna try the new belt first, but I don't think that will fix the issue. Although it doesn't look warped. Maybe the thing is sporting 8 mode. I don't know. Looks fine. Double X. Man, that thing came out great. Fan bully. Ass. Was not that great of an ass. I'm not really a fan of that gearbox noise. I think the bearing is bad, or there is something wrong inside the gearbox. But it seems to work right now, so... Fix the thing when it breaks. <sighs> okay... Guys, what do you think? Let's maybe wrap this one up. I'm kinda tired of this right now. 
Actually, I'm utterly sick of the Wokat right now. So I'm not really sure. Maybe I should continue. But considering the video is already over an hour. I still got the frame cracks to fix up. Pins and bushings, that's gonna take forever. Tilt ram. That thing there. So I actually need to open that up. Mm. Replace the seals and do something about the tent. Anything else is most likely gonna take forever. And then we got that paint job to do. Axle seals. And bearings. Is still bad. And I'm pretty sure I will add a bunch of more stuff here. Gotta figure that bunch out. So, I knew I said I want to end it with this video, but I guess I lied. Deal with it. Well, look at the bright side. We get to see the old Bobby at least one more time. Can I set it on fire, man? Would this crap even burn? I bet it would. Look at that mod. Yeah, I've been using the machine for a bit. What the hell is that? Wow. You can't even see the tire thread. Holy cow, man. Holy cow. Wish that was gold. But anyway. Bye. By the way, guys, want to know something really cool? I just kind of discovered it uh, today. So there is like a... Like a aluminium heatsink back here. So behind this thing, I guess we got like a fan belt or something there. Check that out. That thing actually has a working heater. Although the cab is not enclosed. So I'm not really sure how efficient that stuff is. Plus the bearing. Sounds like it's about to commit suicide. But it works. How about that? The only machine that actually has a working heater. Joseph also has a working heater, but the fan has been removed. Most likely because the operator would just kind of melt if you cranked that thing up. What's up?